You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Jesus Christ, I will have great joy we celebrate today Saint John Paul the Great in our Archdiocese shrines in John Paul II. Dear brothers and sisters, Orchard Lake Schools consist of uh, Saint Mary's Preparatory, Outstanding School, Division of High School for Boys and Girls, Saint Sylvanus Seminary, and Polish Mission. With a great joy, I would, like welcome, I would like to welcome our great guest, Father Peter Stravinskas. Father Peter Stravinskas is a prominent scholar, author, lecturer, who has held leadership positions in several Catholic universities and seminaries. In addition to founding the magazine The Catholic Response, he has written or edited 51 books and more than 600 articles, and has lectured in 80 dioceses nationwide and to other world. But above all, he is a great priest in love with St. John Paul II. Today we would like to deliver this lecture, 25 minutes, to our St. Mary's prep, because you are um, away from campus for two weeks. We are truly sorry that you have to be online and learning from your home, but we thought that it would be good, the development office and everybody thought that it would be great if Father Peter Stravinskas can give you something which you can take with you about John Paul II and uh, something which you can hold in this world which desperately needs peace and, and values and faith and so forth. So, Father Peter Stravinskas, welcome in our community and please give 25 minutes for our singular spread. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> it's a great pleasure to uh, speak with all of you today. Um, I wish, of course, it could be in person. Uh, first of all, I want to say how I hope that you realize how fortunate you are to be attending a Catholic high school. Only about 25% of American teenagers have that possibility, so you're among the chosen few, really. From the age of four, I have spent my entire life in Catholic schools as a student, a teacher, an administrator, and presently serve as president of the Catholic Education Foundation uh, which has been working closely with the Archdiocese of Detroit for the past couple of years, especially through the superintendent of the schools, Mr. Kevin Kajewski. And I want to say also that the happiest days of my priestly life in ministry were when I was in full-time work in Catholic high schools. This year we've been celebrating the 100th, birth, 100th anniversary of the birth of John Paul II, who became Pope on October 16, 1978, your parents probably grew up during his pontificate, and your school is part of the Polish-American commitment to Catholic education and in a special way to honoring the legacy of the Polish Pope. As you probably know, as, as a boy, a young man, a priest, and a bishop, he lived under two totalitarian regimes, Nazism and Communism. And there were many books on his life, and I'm sure that your teachers have already given you much information about his life, but I want to share with you John Paul's thoughts of, of his to young people, and particularly to Catholic school students. And therefore, he's very much the, the Pope of Youth and the Pope of Catholic Education. My first encounter with John Paul occurred during Holy Week of 1979, it was his first Holy Week as Pope, and I had brought ten of my high school students to Rome for the events, the liturgies of Holy Week. And on the Wednesday of Easter week, we were present at a general audience, and we had a banner of our schools. And as the Pope Mobile was coming by, the Pope saw our banner, again showing his tremendous commitment to Catholic education. He had the driver pull over and ask, where are you from? And we said, from Boise, Idaho, Bishop Kelly High School in Boise, Idaho. And he, hmm. And the, one of the students said, are you going, he said, I'm coming to your country. And it was the first thing anyone had heard that he was coming to America, which would be the following fall. And so one of the boys said, are you going to come to our school? He said, where is that? And he said, Boise, Idaho, Idaho, where is Idaho? And the boy said, and you know, we have great skiing because everyone by then knew that John Paul was a great skier. He said, I will come if they let me, and I will ski if they let me. But 
that October, as a matter of fact, he did indeed come to America. And his first stop on that trip was in Boston. <clears throat> and at the Holy Mass celebrated on Boston Common, uh, he dedicated the majority of his homily to young people. One page is introductory material, and then all the rest is to young people. And I want to read you some of those comments. Today, in a very special way, I hold out my hands to the youth of America. In Mexico City, in Guadalajara, I met the youth of Latin America. In Warsaw and Krakow, I met the youth of Poland. In Rome, I meet frequently groups of young people from Italy and from all over the world. Yesterday, I met the youth of Ireland and Galway. And now, with great joy, I meet you. For me, each one of these meetings is a new discovery. Again and again, I find in young people the joy and enthusiasm of life, a searching for truth and for the deeper meaning of the existence that unfolds before them in all its attraction and potential. Then he goes on, Tonight, I want to repeat what I keep telling youth. You are the future of the world, and the day of tomorrow belongs to you. I want to remind you of the encounters that Jesus himself had with the youth of his day. The Gospel is preserved preserve for us, a striking account of a conversation Jesus had with a young man. And then he recounts that episode of reading the, meeting the rich young man. And he asks the rich young man, says, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And our Lord says, keep the commandments. He said, I've done all that. Not bad. What else do I have to do? He said, if you want to be perfect, sell what you have, and come follow me. And perhaps the saddest line in the whole New Testament, it says, the young man went away sad. And Jesus, St. John Paul, picks up on that. He says, this deeply penetrating event, in its concise eloquence, expresses a great lesson in a few words. It touches upon substantial problems and basic questions that have in no way lost their relevance. Everywhere, young people are asking important questions, questions on the meaning of life, on the right way to live, on the true scale of values. What must I do? What must I do to share an everlasting life? The questioning bears witness to your thoughts, your consciences, your hearts, and wills. This questioning tells the world that you, young people, carry within yourselves a special openness with regard to what is good and what is true. This openness is, in a sense, a revelation of the human spirit. And in this openness to truth, to goodness, and to beauty, each one of you can find yourself. Indeed, in this openness, you can all experience in some measure what the young man and the gospel experience. Jesus looked on him with love. And so to each one of you I say, heed the call of Christ when you hear him saying to you, follow me, walk in my path, stand by my side, remain in my love. There is a choice to be made, a choice for Christ and his way of life and his commandment of love. And then he makes a special appeal to the young people when he says, be careful of the allurements of the present moment. And he talks about various forms of escape. And the thing, the situation has not changed since. Do I then make a mistake when I tell you, Catholic youth, that it is part of your task in the world of the church to reveal the true meaning of life, where hatred, neglect, or selfishness threaten to take over the world? Faced with problems and disappointments, many people will try to escape from their responsibility, escape in selfishness, escape in sexual pleasure, escape in drugs, escape in violence, escape in indifference and cynical attitudes. And then he proceeds to say, but he wants to propose something different to the Catholic youth of America. And it's the following of Christ. And it's what he calls genuine love. He says, real love is demanding. So he's not going to try to tell you it's going to be easy. It's not. I would fail in my mission, he says, if I did not clearly tell you so. For it was Jesus, our Jesus himself, who said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Love demands effort and a personal commitment to the will of God. It means discipline and sacrifice, but it also means joy and human fulfillment. Dear young people, do not be afraid, and this line was repeated by him constantly for 27 years, do not be afraid 
of honest effort and honest work. Do not be afraid of the truth. With Christ's help and through prayer, you can answer his call, resisting temptations and fads and every form of mass manipulation. Open your hearts to the Christ of the Gospels, to his love and his truth and his joy, and do not go away sad. So, then we find that same trip. A couple of days later, he was in New York City, and he met with 25,000 Catholic high school students in Madison Square Garden. And I want to read you some pieces of that talk as well. <clears throat> I'm happy to be with you in Madison Square Garden. Today, this is a garden of life, where young people are alive, alive with hope and love, alive with the love of Christ, and it is in the name of Christ that I greet each one of you today. I have been told that you come from Catholic high schools. For this reason, I would like to say something about Catholic education, to tell you why the Church considers it so important and expends so much energy in order to provide you and millions of other young people with a Catholic education. The answer can be summed up in one word, in one person, Jesus Christ. The Church wants to communicate Christ to you. This is what education is all about. This is the meaning of life, to know Christ. To know Christ as a friend, as someone who cares about you, and the person next to you, and all the people here and everywhere, no matter what language they speak, or what clothes they wear, or what color their skin is. And so the purpose of Catholic education is to communicate Christ to you, so that your attitude toward others will be that of Christ. You are approaching that stage in your life when you must take personal responsibility for your own destiny. So you will be making major decisions which will affect the whole course of your life. If these decisions reflect Christ's attitude, then your education will be a success. We have to learn to meet challenges and even crises in the light of Christ's cross and resurrection. Part of your Catholic education is to learn to see the needs of others, to have the courage to practice what we believe in. With the support of a Catholic education, we try to meet every circumstance of life with the attitude of Christ. Yes, the Church wants to communicate Christ to you so that you will come to full maturity in Him, who is the perfect human, and at the same time, the Son of God. And he concludes, Dear young people, you and I, and all of us together, make up the Church, and we are convinced that only in Christ do we find real love and the fullness of life. And so I invite you today to look to Christ. When you wonder about the mystery of yourself, look to Christ, who gives you the meaning of life. When you wonder what it means to be a mature person, look to Christ, who is the fullness of humanity. And when you wonder about your role in the future of the world and the United States, look to Christ. Only in Christ will you fulfill your potential as an American citizen and as a citizen of the world community. With the aid of your Catholic education, you have received the greatest of gifts, the knowledge of Christ. Of this gift, St. Paul wrote, I believe nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For him I have accepted the loss of everything, and I look on everything as so much rubbish, if only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. A few years later, actually several years later, in 1993, at one of the World Youth Days, actually the World Youth Day in Denver, Colorado, John Paul once again took time out of a very, very busy schedule to spend several days in Denver. These World Youth Days, perhaps more parents participated in them, maybe you had gone to some of them uh, in recent years as well. And he says this to the young people in Denver, <clears throat> This is no time to be ashamed of the gospel. It is the time to preach it. Do not be afraid to break out of comfortable, routine modes of living in order to take up the challenge of making Christ known in the modern metropolis. Do not be afraid. Do not be satisfied with mediocrity. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. I plead with you, never ever give up on hope, never doubt, never tire, and never be discouraged. Be not afraid. And once again, you see the tremendous appeal to you young people 
And that message is powerful today as it was then. But I'd like to underline, do not be satisfied with mediocrity. So it's not enough to slim by in a class with a C. Strive for greatness in your academics, in your spiritual life, the importance of Sunday Mass and daily prayer. Otherwise, participation in a Catholic school doesn't mean much. It's sort of a, a, a foundationless opportunity. And then finally, he tells us in a talk to 5,000 high school students, only in Christ do we find real love and the fullness of life. When you, again, when you wonder what it means to be a mature person, look to Christ, who is the fullness of humanity. And when you wonder about your role in the future of the world, look to Christ. And finally, I would mention a talk he gave to young people in Los Angeles in 1987. And he gets very personal here. He says, I'm often asked, especially by young people, why I became a priest. Maybe some of you would like to ask the same question. Let me try briefly to reply. I must begin by saying that it is impossible to explain entirely, for it remains a mystery even to myself. How does one explain the ways of God? Yet I know that at a certain point in my life, I became convinced that Christ was saying to me what he had said to thousands before me, come follow me. There was a clear sense that what I heard in my heart was no human voice, nor was it just an idea of my own. Christ was calling me to serve him as a priest. And then he makes a personal invitation to you. And you can probably tell that I am deeply grateful to God for my vocation to the priesthood. Nothing means more to me or gives me greater joy than to celebrate Mass each day and to serve God's people in the Church. This has been true ever since the day of my ordination as a priest. Nothing has ever changed this, not even becoming Pope. So, I want to thank you for your, your kind attention. I thank you for allowing me to share the mind and the heart of St. John Paul II. Be sure that you thank your parents for me, for having made that very wise decision to commit your education to the Church. And be grateful for them, and express that gratitude every day for the sacrifices they make for your Catholic education. And be sure to thank your teachers, who also sacrifice so much. If they were working in the government schools, they could be making 40 to 50 percent more. But they sacrifice so they can share with you a Christian vision of life. Seek often the powerful intercession of John Paul II. And as we end our little appointment this afternoon, I wish to give you my priestly blessing, and I have no doubt that St. John Paul, the Pope of Youth and the Pope of Catholic Education, will be joining me in that action from the house of our Heavenly Father. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Stravinskas. Thank you so much for uh, being with us and especially giving the, the opportunity to see Mary students to, to hear you. Uh, I would like to just remind you that we will have today, 6 p.m., Holy Mass. Southern uh, Holy Bishop uh, Robert Fisher, Southern uh, Bishop of uh, Angeles, Detroit, and homilies will be Father Peter Stravinskas. Tomorrow, uh, Friday, we will have the presentation. Uh, John Paul II and the Lady, Father Stravinska, 6 p.m., and that will be in Archdiocese and Shrines in John Paul II, and then 7 p.m. Mass in Polish language. The presider will be Father Andrzej Maśleja, the pastor of Our Lady of Częstochowa in Stelwy. Saturday, Saturday at 5.30 p.m., we will have the presentation. Father Peter Stravinska will talk about John Paul II's vision of citizenship in an election year. So important today. And then 6 p.m. 6 p.m. I would like to invite all of the Chaldean friends as we will have a mass celebrated by Bishop Francis Calaba. And then, as you all know, every Sunday at 11 a.m. we have the English Mass in our blessed shrine of John Paul II. This Sunday we are blessed beyond measure that Father Stravinskas will stay longer with us and he will celebrate the mass and he will deliver communion. So this coming Sunday. The October 25th, 11 a.m. Mass 
celebrant Father Stephanus has come so quickly. Father, thank you for being joyful. Uh, thank you for being like God, John Paul II, and God bless you in your priesthood. Thank you, Father. Let's say a prayer for St. Mary's Prep as you are being on a, um, away from campus on the 27th. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. John Paul III, pray, pray for us. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you are never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.